Spawn Camp here. In this video, we'll be turning 3D models into sprites. Similar to the original Doom game, we'll be practically photo scanning our models to make our sprites. Only, we'll be using virtual models and Unity as our camera. So let's get started. First, let's set up our studio. In our case, Unity. Open the hub, create yourself a new project of the 3D variety, and name it whatever you like, and create. So here's a basic sprite sheet. You can see that it normally comes with a blue or green background. This helps the sprite stand out and will help us cut it out later. So let's do that in Unity. Go to our camera and in the inspector. First we'll reset the transform to center it. And then we'll set the clear flags to a solid color. We'll give this a similar color to our example sprite sheet. And we'll be using the game view window so make sure that that's open. You can find it in Windows General Game if it's not. And for now, we'll set our directional light to be a white color instead of yellow. Now we need a model. I found this zombie asset on the Asset Store by Super Scion. I chose this one because it has animations, but feel free to use any one you want. Now after adding the asset, we want to go to the Package Manager. We want to sort by My Assets and just search for the asset. It's the first one here, so I'm going to download it and import it and we'll grab everything. So let's go in our asset we just downloaded and in our prefabs folder we'll go into base and then finally under high quality we find a prefab that's perfect. So let's just drag this into the hierarchy so it's centered and then we'll need to adjust our camera. Just pull it out in front of our model for now. Two is a good number to start with. It's facing the wrong way so let's rotate it 180 degrees on its y-axis. Now let's line our camera up a little better, make sure that our sprite is centered and nice and big in the game view. Now if you hover the game view and press shift and space, you'll get this maximized view that's great for taking pictures. So if you press shift and space again, we'll go out and one last thing we need to do is fix our light. It's a little crooked so let's just rotate it around, get it centered and we're going to reduce the intensity just a bit. Get ready to rotate our character and let's pop back in the maximize view. The best way to grab the image is print screen, but I'm gonna hold window shift and S and it's gonna open the snipping tool and I'm gonna use that and drag across the whole screen. Now in your image editing program, I'm using Photoshop. If I go to make a new document, the dimensions are already gonna be there because we have something in our clipboard. So I'll just make a new document. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna paste this in and then we're gonna name our layer. I'll name this one front. Then we can right click our background and go ahead and delete it. Now if you don't have Photoshop, we can always use GIMP and it's free and the process is practically the same. We're gonna make a new document. The dimensions should be there. If they're not, you can just put them in. And then we're gonna paste our layer. And then over here, we'll make sure to name it. Then again, we'll delete our background layer. Now it's time for our next shot or our next frame. So we're gonna rotate our character and then take another snapshot. We'll go back into our image editor and we're just gonna paste this layer and name it like we did before. Now we're gonna go back into UD, rotate our player and repeat this process for a full rotation. Now that we have all our images, we need to get rid of the background. And there's a couple ways to do this. I think the polygonal lasso tool would work the best to trace the sprite by hand. It allows more precision and control, and you can be more certain that your background's not gonna bleed into your image. So if you got the time to do it, it's a good choice. In GIMP, you can use a regular lasso tool. If you click and hold it, it will freehand but if you single click, you get the same function as the Photoshop tool. Another method in Photoshop is to use the select color range and then use the eyedropper to grab the background color. This works pretty good on most images and it helps if you have a bright contrasting background. But the way we're going to do it is to use the magic wand. I think in GIMP it's called like fuzzy select or something. Anyway, we'll grab this tool and select our background. It's going to try to grab all the pixels of the same color. It makes a decent outline around our character, but you'll see in some spots that the blue is still showing. 
So what we're going to do is go to Select, Modify, and we're going to expand our selection by one pixel. And you'll see that this kind of cuts into the sprite, but that makes sure that there's going to be no blue. And then we hit Delete, and you'll see that it don't look half bad. Now in GIMP, it's pretty much the same process. We'll grab our Fuzzy Select tool, we'll click our background, and you can see here we have the same problem where there's blue pixels. So in GIMP, it's Select and Grow, and we want to grow our selection by one pixel, and then we need to delete it. Back in Photoshop, we're done with the first sprite, so let's hit the eye icon next to the layer to hide the layer, and then we'll do the same process to the second frame, or second layer. Now we just rinse and repeat. Yeah, now our sprites don't have a blue background. But we still have the Unity UI wrapped around our sprite, so let's get rid of it. In Photoshop, it's simple as grabbing the crop tool and we'll crop everything out but the area where our background was. While I was recording this, I didn't know GIMP had the same tool, but this is the method I use. I use the box select, select the area I want to crop, then go to image, and crop to selection. In Photoshop, our images are pretty much finished, so let's go over here in the layers and unhide all of our images. select all the layers and we're going to hit Control T to be able to scale this thing. In GIMP I believe it's Shift S. So we're just going to scale this down. We're going to position the sprites to the top left corner and then we're going to deselect our first sprite and move the rest of them over. And then we'll deselect the next sprite and move it over. And then we'll repeat this until all of our sprites are laid out in a straight line. Make sure none of these are overlapping. Lastly, we'll grab our crop tool and get rid of everything we don't need. And when we're finally happy with our sprite sheet, we can go to File and Save for Web. Make sure you're saving these as PNGs and hit Save. Name it whatever you want, just save it somewhere you can find. In GIMP, I believe that you go to File and Export, and just export this as a PNG. Now we're in Unity and we're in a 2D project, so let's go ahead and drag in our sprite sheet directly into our project window. Click it, the texture type should be Sprite 2D and UI, and our sprite mode should be multiple. Then scroll to the bottom and hit apply, and click Sprite Editor. If none of these are overlapping, we can just hit Slice, keep it on automatic, and hit Slice, and it should do a pretty good job. Now we want to click apply and exit out of the window. Now we can expand our sprite sheet and see all the sprites it made. So if we're in a 3D project, the sprite editor won't work. We'll have to add it in through the package manager. Change the sorting to Unity. We need to search. Well, we don't need to search. It's right here on top. So go ahead and hit this 2D sprite and hit install. Back in our 2D project, we're going to grab the first sprite. Just drag it on the screen. Scale it up. And when you do, you can notice some blurring. Fix this by going to our sprite sheet. And where it says filter mode, we need to change that to point, no filter. And of course, hit apply. Now the sprite is more crisp and it has that nice pixelated look I'm going for. Now I'm going to open the animator window and our animation window and I'm going to dock it down here at the bottom. So now I'll move the game window to the corner, not really digging the blue background so I'm going to pick our main camera and change it to something dark and I'm also going to get back into our scene view and reselect our zombie. Now I'll pop out the animation window and we want to create a new clip and we're just going to call this something like zombie spin and hit save. Next we'll use shift select to grab all of the sprites and we'll just drag these straight into the animation window. We can grab this little handle on the right make this clip a little longer. I'll also duplicate the last frame and add it to the end so it loops correctly. And if you hit play we've done it. We've turned a 3D model into a 2D sprite. Now with the same techniques that we just used, we can make something more interesting like this animation. So if we dig into the zombie asset, we can find this animations folder. We have some prefabs here, so let's expand out this idle prefab. And we have this idle animation. We can just drag this straight onto our model. 
Now let's go back into the animation window and we can just scrub through this animation and take shots of frames that we need. I'll pop out this game window and make it as big as I possibly can and not get in the way of the animation window. Then it's deja vu. We'll take a screenshot of our first frame and then we'll scrub forward a little bit. And then we'll take another screenshot for our second frame. And while I was recording this, I actually learned that the snipping tool has this button where you can take a screenshot of just a particular window, which would be another good method. So here we go. First we delete the backgrounds, then we arrange the sprites, then we'll save the sprite sheet, we'll drag it into Unity, we'll change all the settings that we need to change, we'll create a new animation clip, then use all the sprites, and voila, we have our more interesting animation. But now we have the tools and knowledge to go even deeper. With multiple clips made from the sprite sheets, we can create a simple animator state machine and add in a bit of code that didn't work at first. And after setting up the variables, we have a 2D sprite playable character made from a 3D model. There's lots of possibilities here, just gotta think outside the box. Until next time, Spawn Camp out.